He couldn't have gotten far. What was that? Stay alert. There! Stay calm. Don't worry. I'm not here to hurt you. How about a Diet Coke? You want one? Yeah? Internet, welcome to Game Theory, the show that only gives you one instruction. Defa! Mash the subscribe button. Huh, mysterious red text that isn't the same as the rest? Totally not suspicious. Today, with the FNAF timeline finally behind me, we are overdue to cover something completely different. A game where we explore an abandoned children's entertainment venue filled with oversized characters that were at one point friendly, but then turned evil on account of being possessed by the souls of dead children. See? Completely different! Yes, my friends, we're hopping back onto the Poppy Playtime train, because while I've been busy over in my own personal animatronic hellscape, Mob Entertainment has been dropping all sorts of new content. The spin-off title Project Playtime, a complex multi-month-long ARG, and my other favorite form of content, Analog Horror YouTube videos. Because you can't spell Analog Horror without the lore! Oh, I, I, I suppose you can. There's there's no E in Analog Horror. Well, guess what? It's a silent E anyway. Call it the phonetic spelling of lore. So far, Mob has released two quote-unquote lost VHS tapes to their YouTube channel. One from 1992, and the second from 1995. Look, the titles have the dates in there and everything. Even even a .mp4 at the end for that truly authentic lost footage feel. Despite the fact that the mp4 as a file format didn't exist until 2001. But who am I to judge? Anachronistic file formats aside, these things aren't just filled with a bunch of mindless spooks building hype for the eventual release of Chapter 3, they're also filled with clues to the lore. And I think, thanks to one of these, I've been able to solve the identity of a fan favorite character. Everyone's beloved jumbo pink plushy, Kissy Missy. Who's hidden inside our floppy little friend? I think I have the answer for ya. So so grab your tranquilizer darts and flashlights, theorists. There's a theory on the loose. The first VHS released onto the channel was called Restricted Disappearance 0618-1992.mp4. In this video, we see Huggy escape the facility and run out into the woods with a large group of playtime employees in pursuit. Five end up dead and six remain missing. Seems like Huggy can't be stopped. But then the video ends with an ominous scene of the giant Huggy peacefully standing next to a normal residential house. He's captured and brought back to the facility. In terms of lore, this video does a lot with very little. On the surface, this tape feels very straightforward. Huggy escapes the facility, scares ensue, and then he's brought back. But this short, basic narrative actually goes a long way to confirm many suspicions that we've had about the characters and the events of this franchise. First, this video reinforces the timeline of the Bigger Bodies initiative, Playtime Co.'s push to create giant toys that help around the factory. We know via unlockable cards that are found in Project Playtime that Mommy Longlegs started as a Bigger Body creation before they wound up making toys of her in 1991. So this VHS taking place in 1992 fits into that rather nicely. The project is in full swing at this point, and the trapped toys are starting to get restless. It also confirms something that we've suspected for a while now, that some of these giant toys were created using orphans in some way. That's why we see Huggy standing outside of a house at the end of the tape. He was just trying to go back home, the home that he was either adopted into or his foster home. His childlike instincts taking him back to the last place that he felt safe. It's this incredibly sad, somber moment that does a lot to showcase the tragedy of this game's story. And that's not all. This Huggy seems to be acting differently to the one that we met in Chapter 1. Huggy escapes the facility, but there's no mention of violence towards the staff. Huggy only seems to become violent to the employees after they shoot at him. This tells me that Huggy, and presumably some of the other experiments like him, aren't naturally violent. It also reinforces what we see in Project Playtime's tutorial. Huggy is largely complacent until the prototype urges Huggy to kill. They are trying to build more toys, more light. It really seems like the bigger body's monsters are the collateral damage in this war between Playtime co-employees and the prototype, Experiment 1006. They're the innocents that wind up being caught in the middle. This is something that we can start to see more clearly in the next tape, Restricted Relocation 0808-1995.mp4. In this newest VHS tape, we see Kissy Missy being transported towards Playcare in August of 1995. The tape repeatedly tells us not to view the footage. I can't possibly see that plan going wrong in any way. 
way. Again, just shows the absolute negligence of this company. So of course, we keep watching, and in true Playtime Co. fashion, things start to go wrong. We travel down the rails with Kissy strapped to the train. As we ride, we pass by graffiti on the wall that reads, The Hour of Joy is at Hand. In between camera shots, we see text flash on screen meant to be instructions for employees, but then each message winds up getting overridden by capitalized red text that says basically to do the opposite. It tells them to release the straps that bind Kissy Missy, which, as you'd expect, means that the employees wind up dead at the side of the tracks. It's another simple, straightforward take.